All right, we're going to do a few simple proofs related to the relations R and S, which are both relations on A. In the first part, we're going to show that when R and S are both reflexive, this implies that the re relation R union S is also reflexive. So R is a relation on A, S is a relation on A. If I union these two things together, I still have a relation on A. It's just that R union S is a new relation. So how am I going to show that? So let's pick an x in the set A. Since x is in A, and we know that R is reflexive, that means x comma x has to be in R. So that's the definition of a reflexive, or I'm sorry, yeah, reflexive relation, is that no matter what element you choose from the set that it's defined on, x comma x is in the relation R. So we know that x comma x is in R. Well, if x comma x is in R, then x comma x is clearly in the set R union s, because I can always union something, and I'm still an element of it. So x comma x is in R union s. Well, look at this. We started off with the fact that we chose an arbitrary element in A, and we showed that this arbitrary element x, which is in A, x comma x ended up being in R union s. Well, this is just the definition of being reflexive. So R union S is reflexive as long as R is reflexive. Okay, let's do another little proof, part two. Let's show that when R and S are symmetric, R union S is symmetric. So let's pick an X and Y in R union S. So I'm picking an element from the re relation R union S. By the definition of a union, what does it mean for a, an element to be in a union of sets? Well, that means the element x, y is in R, or it's in the set S. So this is just the definition of a union. Now what we're going to do is we're going to break this into cases. No, and we'll show that no matter what case we're in, it turns out that this is a symmetric relation. So let's look at this case. Let's look at the left side of the OR. Let's assume that we have the case x, y is in R. Well, x, y being in R implies that y, x is in R because R, we are told, is a symmetric relation. And that's what it means to be symmetric, that you can flip those coordinates and you're still in the set. So y, comma, x is in R. Guess what? y, comma, x is also in R union S. I can always union with something. If I'm already an element of it, if I union something else on, I'm still an element of it. So y, comma, x is in R union S. So we've started off with an arbitrary element x comma y in R union S, and we've shown that y comma x is an element of R union S. So this, by definition, means that R union S is symmetric. All right, what about the other case? What if x comma y wasn't in R, but it was in S? So that's the other case of the or. We can work through this very similarly. If x comma y is in S, that means that y comma x is in S because we're told that S is symmetric. That's just the defini definition of a symmetric relation. If y comma x is in S, then y comma x is in R union S. Again, if I'm already in the set, if I union something else on, I'm still going to be in the set. So now we've also shown again that R union S is symmetric because we started with an arbitrary element x comma y in R union S and showed that it was that y comma x was in R union S. So R union S is symmetric. So there's two little proofs that show how kind of baseline relations, in this case R and S, with properties sometimes transfer their properties to functions of the relationships, relations, in this case the union of the two relations. This doesn't always happen for all operations, but in this specific case where we're using unions, the reflexive and symmetric properties kind of came along for the ride, so to speak.